Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here. Welcome to my new Let's Play. Let's play Pilot Wing 64. Now, some of you guys are probably thinking that this is just a giant joke. Mainly because this game, you've probably even never heard of it. And if you have, um, you're probably wondering if this game can even be Let's Play. Well, to be fair, there is a natural progression throughout the game, and there's a bunch of stuff you can unlock, and, you know, you get rewards for the more things you do in the game, so I figured that I'd go ahead and, you know, Let's Play. This has always been one of my favorite games, despite how simplistic it is in some retrospect. There's not really a lot of content here, and it can be kind of repetitive, but... It's a game I've always enjoyed, and when I do Let's Plays, I tend to pick games that I enjoy doing. And this probably is one of my N64 favorites, despite how, again, how simplistic it is. Basically, the goal of this game is you are trying to become a world-class pilot. There's not really a big story behind it, it's just, you know, kind of what you have to take from the game itself. Uh, there are three main vehicles you can control, the hang glider, the rocket belt, and the gyrocopter. Um, you have to do a variety of missions with each vehicle, and you get graded based on how well you do the missions and how well you land after doing the missions. Um, basically what I'm going to be doing in this playthrough is I'm going to be going for an all gold medal playthrough, which means basically you have to get 90% of the points in all the missions in each class. Uh, when you select the mission, you're going to choose your character. There's really not much I have to say about the characters. Um, I know there are some hidden uh, differentiables between them, but I honestly don't know them off the top of my head. Uh, basically, though, there are lighter characters, middleweight characters, and heavy characters. Lightweight characters, they have a little more maneuverability, and they also tend to get thrown, a lot, or thrown around a lot in the air. And then there's also the heavy characters, which... You know, they're more solid and they can go a lot faster, but it's kind of hard to, you know, turn with them and that kind of thing. And if you couldn't tell, all the characters are named after birds. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just start with Lark, just because he's the main character. And because I prefer lightweight characters for the hang glider missions. Uh, for the hang glider, here are the controls. You move with the control stick, pause with the start button, switch the camera viewpoint from first to third with the uh, R button. You move the camera's eye around with the C buttons, and then you can also use the A and B buttons to put out your feet and try to land when you're trying to go for the landing. You can also do that to slow down a little bit. And then you can also hit the Z button to snap a photo. Uh, there are photograph missions, but we're not going to worry about that right now since you don't have to take any photographs in this mission. Uh, the hang glider by itself is kind of a difficult machine to, to use, uh, mainly because you can't actually ascend with the hand glider. Uh, when you're moving with the hand glider, you don't really gain altitude, you kind of just ascend before you're on the ground. Uh, you can normally ascend by using the um, air terminals, as you can probably see in the background. Uh, you can use those to ascend, but for the most part, you'll be on a decline the entire time. And here's the scoring guide, basically all the points you can get from the mission. Uh, in this mission, we have to fly through three rings. If we fly through all three of them, we get 40 points. And you get 40 points for landing accuracy and 20 points for landing impact. We'll talk about that a little later. Uh, the hints are basically just telling you how to land. Uh, there's a pretty easy trick to land with the hand glider, which I'll probably discuss later on. Uh, you can also view a demo if you want, and then you can also view the map to basically get a layout of what you're doing. Uh, the landing point is usually marked on uh, as a red square, and the rings are usually marked as either green or yellow on the radar. Uh, I believe they're marked as green when you're above them, and they're marked as yellow when you're below them. So if like you're far away from them, you can kind of get an idea if, if you need to ascend or not to get them. Uh, this is a pretty easy mission. All you have to do is fly through the rings. Not very hard to do. Just fly through the rings. That's really about it. Uh, now for the landing. Um, the best way to do the landing is first you want to get as close as the ground you can get without like crashing into the ground. And then as you approach the target, you want to press the A or B button as soon as you get into the target and try to uh, push yourself into the middle. 
Uh, the closer to you are to the middle, the higher you'll get for landing accuracy. And landing impact uh, basically determines how soft you landed. Uh, I actually got a perfect score there, which I'm actually kind of impressed with myself, because... And I'm not really that consistent with the hang glider, even though I think it is probably one of the easier vehicles to use, or, well, one of the easier things to do in this game, rather. But we got a perfect score. Uh, you really don't get a reward for a perfect score. You do later on, but it's not what I'm going to be doing for this playthrough, because it's kind of hard on the later missions. Uh, next, I want to talk about the rocket belt, and we're going to do the first rocket belt mission. Um, for the rocket belts, I usually prefer to use the heavier characters or the middleweight characters. In my opinion, it really doesn't matter, though, because the rocket belt is definitely the easiest uh, machine to use in this game. Just with how you use it, basically. Uh, for the controls, the control stick, star button, R button, and C buttons work in the same way. Uh, the A button controls a strong jet, and the B button controls a weak jet. And you can use the Z button to use an air brake or hover, basically. You stop just like immediately after you hit the Z button. Uh, these are the points you can get for this mission. Uh, as you can see, they added time points. Basically, with time points, as long as you meet the time restriction that it shows you at the bottom of the screen, you should get a perfect. If you go a little bit over the time goal, you will start losing points in that department. And as usual, they also have the landing accuracy and impact scores as well. Um, for the um, rocket belt landing, there's not really much I have to go into very big detail about. Um, it's really easy to land at the rocket belt, although I find getting the full landing impact points kind of random. It never really seems to work for me 100% of the time, and I never really understand why. But I'll get into that in a little bit. Let's actually start this mission now. Uh, the goal of this mission is just to hit this balloon on top of the castle, and then land. So, let's go up here, and hit the balloon. Now that we got that out of the way, it's time to land. So for the landing, uh, what you might, might want to do is, as you approach the target, you might want to switch to your uh, R camera view. Because you kind of get a you kind of get a top-down view of the area and what's below you. That way, you can kind of maneuver yourself over the center of the target, and then once you're over the center, you can start falling. And while you're falling, you want to keep pressing the Z button so you land softly. And that is usually how you're supposed to get a perfect score. I'm not really sure why it never always works for me, but that is basically from like videos I've seen. That's usually how people do it, and. I managed to pull it off right there, thank god. Also, I should probably put a little more emphasis on how soft you land during that, because if you land too hard with the rocket belt, you can sometimes get some point deductions, like sometimes the screen will just pop up and say, two points deducted. Uh, you really, really, really have to land soft when you're using the rocket belt, so just be very careful with that. And you should be okay. You really don't want to, you know, miss out on a gold badge or a perfect score just because you randomly decided to land a bit too hard. So, just be careful with it and you should be fine. But, you got a perfect score, so let's move on to the third and the final machine of the game. Or rather, the, the final of the main three machines of the game. The Gyrocopter. The Gyrocopter, I either recommend using the heavyweight or the middleweight characters. Uh, since I haven't used a middle way yet, I'll go ahead and use one for this mission. Uh, controls, a lot of them are pretty much the same. Uh, the A button increases the throttle setting, and the B button decreases the throttle setting. Basically, that means A goes faster, B breaks. That's really all it means in simplest terms. I mean, there's obviously a heavier definition there, but that's how I'm going to define them. And then you can also use the Z button to fire missiles, but we won't have to worry about that right now. Here's the scoring for the mission. Uh, once again, we have time points, and we have to do this mission before, or rather, complete the mission before 1.30. As for the landing with the gyrocopter, landing is probably the most difficult with the gyrocopter, not counting the extra games. And you're going to see why when I'm trying to land with this thing, because... It's not really that difficult, it's like not hard to explain, but to pull off, it's a lot more difficult than you would think. Basically, instead of a target, we actually have to land on a runway. 
and you know you get scored based on how softly you land on the runway and how straight you are with the runway so you have to land basically in the middle of the runway and you have to land pretty softly as well which is kind of a challenge in its own right so when you're approaching the runway you're going to want to hold the B button to kind of slow down a little bit so you can get you know properly aligned and also to soften the landing then try to line up with the middle and then make sure you land at about this point and wow that was actually a pretty good landing I don't know if it was perfect but we'll find out momentarily okay wow that was actually a perfect landing how about that so yeah that's basically how the gyrocopter works uh, we'll get into a lot of more interesting gyrocopter missions as we go through the game do not worry uh, especially the missions involving using the missiles those are a lot of fun I actually can't wait until we get into some of those missions. So, after we get gold medals on all of the beginner class stages, we actually unlock an extra game, the Birdman. Or rather, the Birdman stage for the Holiday Course. Uh, the Holiday Course is basically the island we did the last three missions on. To unlock the rest of the extra games, you have to get a silver badge on all of the vehicles for each class. So basically, if you get a silver badge on all the Class A missions, uh, you'll unlock one of the extra games. Uh, if you do the same thing for the Class B, you get another extra game. And if you do the same thing for the Pilot class, you'll get another extra game. So that is how you unlock all the extra games. I will be showing off the extra games in this project, but not until the end of the project. So uh, you'll have to wait till the very end before I get all those. Uh, first, I'm actually going to complete all the main missions first. So let's actually get started with the Class A hand glider missions. Uh, for Class A, you actually get two tests instead of just one. And your score on both tests will actually determine what kind of badge you get. Since there is 200 possible points, you have to get at least a 180 to get a gold badge. So uh, that is going to be my goal for this set of missions. Uh, the first mission we're going to be do doing is called Shuttle Bu or Shutter Bug. I'm sorry. Uh, Shutterbug is basically, if you've played Pokemon Snap, it's a photograph mission where you have to take a photo of something and then land. And you actually get scored based on your photograph. For this mission, we'll be taking a picture of a oil plant flame. And as you can see, the photo is worth 60 points, so that is a very, very large majority of the points for this mission. You can also take a look at a sample photo to basically show you what you're going to be taking a picture of. That is the flame, so we have to get a picture kind of like that. So, let us start the mission. As you can see, the uh, flame is marked on your radar as the yellow or green spot. Again, depending on whether you're below or above it. All you have to do is fly over to it and snap a picture, not really hard to do. Although I will admit, the photo missions are my least favorite part of the hang glider. I sincerely hate this mission, these missions just because, I mean, you can't really get a perfect score. I mean, you can, but you really have to have a good sense of what the picture needs to look like. And that's kind of hard to do for some of these missions. For this one, it's really not that bad. Just, uh, you know, just get close to the flame and keep on taking pictures. Try to get a very close one if you can. <laughs> I like that you can actually go through the flame and burn yourself and your hang glider. I always find that kind of funny. And then, once you get the picture, you have to turn around and go for the target. Also, I should remind you, you only have six photos, so don't waste too many of your photos. And try to slow down a bit. This target is actually kind of hard to hit if you're not careful. But yeah, just slow down a bit and try to go in for a good landing. That should have actually been pretty good. Probably not perfect, but still pretty good. Okay, yeah, that was pretty good. Perfect landing. I only missed three points on the photo. So, I'll show the photos really quickly, but I actually have to end this video now. Uh, this has been Slim Kirby. This is Let's Play Pilot Wings. I hope you enjoy the project. I know this is going to be a very, very odd game to Let's Play, but again, it's one of my all-time favorite games, so I felt like sharing it with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy Later, folks.